Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video for chapter 3, 3.1 Galvanic Cell. In this video, what we're going to learn is to draw a voltaic or galvanic cell, to describe the operation of voltaic cell, state the function of salt bridge, and express half cell equation and the overall cell reaction equation. Okay, before we look further into galvanic cell, what we're going to do is actually we will do division, what is meant by oxidation and reduction which I believe you also have learned it during your secondary school. Okay, so what is actually an oxidation? Okay, an oxidation is a process where the atoms, molecules or ion will gain oxygen or lose hydrogen. It is also a process where species will lose electron and have an increase in oxidation number. However, substance that undergoes oxidation is called as reducing agent. Okay. So, uh, that is actually quite a lot of definition for oxidation. But which one that you have to memorize or which one we will use in this chapter 3 is actually the third one about the losing of electron. Okay, so here we have an acronym uh, to help you to remember. is OIL. Oxidation is losing. So, it lose of what? Losing the electron. Okay, so remember for oxidation, it is oil, oxidation is losing electron. Okay, and then you have to remember that for the case of oxidation, it will occur at anode. Okay. So for the electrochemistry, uh, we will look at anode, we will look at cathode. Okay. So oxidation happen at anode. Okay, how to memorize it? Okay, remember N ox. So N stands for anode, now ox stands for oxidation. Again, what is oxidation? Oxidation is here is oil, oxidation is losing electron. Okay, that is for oxidation. Now we're going to look at the reduction, where it's the complete opposite of oxidation. Okay, so reduction is actually a process where atoms, molecules, or ion will lose oxygen or gain hydrogen. It is also a process where the species will gain electron and have a decrease in oxidation number. However, the species that undergoes reduction is called oxidizing agent. Again, which one we uh, which one that you have to remember is the this one, gain electron, but the electron itself. So the tips for you to remember, okay. Previously you have to look at oil. Okay, now we're going to look at rick. So reduction is gaining. Gaining of what? Gaining of electron. Okay, and then for the reduction process, it happened at cathode. Okay, so that's why we have here red cat. Red stands for reduction, cat stands for cathode. And again, what is re uh, reduction? Reduction is re gaining of electron. Okay, so the term that you have to remember for this chapter is actually this one. Okay. It's oil rig. Oil rig just to show uh, the oxidation is losing electron and reduction is gaining electron. And ox to show that oxidation happened at N0. And red cat shows that the reduction happened at cathode. Okay, that is actually the introduction for this overall chapter. Okay, next what we're going to look at is actually uh, the operation of the galvanic cell. The so your notes will be on page 2. Okay, before we look into the operation of the galvanic cell, let's look for the component of the galvanic cell. Okay, so for the first component for the galvanic cell is the half cell. So, what is a half cell? It consists of electrode immersed in an electrolyte. Okay, so here we have our electrolyte in a beaker. Uh, electrolyte is our aqueous solution as well as we have our solid electrode. Okay, where the more positive electropositive metal will be the anode and the less electropositive metal will be the cathode. So, because we have our anode and cathode, so it means that we will have two half cells. Okay. Here, uh, this is actually based upon, I believe during your secondary school, you have to memorize the order of the electropositive metal to determine which one is anode, which one is cathode. But for this, uh, for the matriculation symbol, um, syllabus, you don't have to memorize. We can determine the anode and cathode based upon the E naught cell value. Okay, so the next component of our galvanic cell is the salt bridge. So which one is the salt bridge? Is this one. Okay, salt bridge is an inverted U-tube containing a gel permeated with solution of an inert electrolyte. So, example of inert electrolyte, KCl, Na2SO4, 
and H4NO3 and KNO3. So here is actually inverted U tube. Okay, in the laboratory you will have a handle here. Okay, so here is actually the component uh, for the governing sum. You need to have your salt bridge. So what is actually the function of the salt bridge itself? One is to help to separate the two electrolyte. Okay, and the second one, it helps to maintain electrical neutrality by completing the circuit okay, in the cell by allowing the flow of ion. Okay, so what does it mean by here? Later, we're going to uh, see it uh, for the how salt bridge works. Okay, so we have our half cell here, two of our half cell, and we have our salt bridge. And the last component that we need is actually the voltmeter. Okay, the voltmeter is connected to your electrode of your anode and your cathode. Okay, so that is actually for the component of the voltage cell. Okay, next, uh, we're going to learn the operation of the voltage cell. Okay, again, for the voltage cell, what we're going to have is actually our half cell here. So we have our electrolyte and electrode for the anode and our cathode. Okay, and we need the salt bridge as well as the voltmeter to record the re uh, to record the reading uh, between the reaction between the two half set. Okay, so we have here zinc and we have here copper. Since zinc is more electropositive than copper, hence zinc will be at anode and copper will be at cathode. Okay, so for uh at anode, what is the reaction? Remember here. It's actually the one that we have learned in the first page. Anox and it's oil, red cat or red. Okay, so at and what, what actually happened is actually ox. So here oxidation occur while at cathode, okay, red. So it means that reduction occur. And then we have learned that for the case of oxidation is oil. So it means that oxidation is losing. But for this case, we know that the matter involved it's actually zinc. The species involved is zinc. So we have to write down okay, the zinc will lose the electron. While for the case of cathode, for the case of reduction, brick is gaining electron. Okay, what is the species that is gaining electron? Is the copper. So copper gain electron. Okay, so that is for, for the process itself. Okay, so how about the equation? So it means that what will happen is that the zinc solid. Here, the zinc solid will lose the electron, and what will happen? It will lose the electron. It will, it will form zinc two plus. So zinc solid will form zinc two plus equals plus two electron. So when we look here for the equation of chapter three, it's not only the atom is balanced one to one ratio. Next is actually you have to make sure the charge is balanced as well. Here the charge is positive two. Here is negative two. So the overall charge here is zero. This one is zero as well. Okay, so that is for at anode. Okay, how about the cathode? Okay, so since anode is losing electron, okay, so at cathode here the uh, reduction process where it will gain electron. Okay, so which one will gain the electron? Is it the Cu two plus or the Cu solid? It will be the Cu two plus. So Cu two plus equals plus 2e will form Cu solid. Okay, again, when we look here, 1 to 1 ratio, and then here, positive 2, negative 2, here it's 0. Okay, if you write down, for example, here is Cu solid. Here is Cu 2 plus. When you check it, you will realize that the charge is not balanced. Because here we have negative 2, here we have positive 2. So that's why you have to swap it around lah. Okay, but no worries later we're gonna look into uh we're gonna look uh, do a lot of exercises where we're gonna do the equation itself. Okay, so that is actually for the equation. Okay, next we have to do the overall sum equation. So what we have to do is actually we have to write down the equation at anode here as well as the cathode. For the overall equation, what you have to do is actually you have to simplify this equation okay by cancelling. Um, the species that is the similar. So here we have electron on the opposite side, on the product side. Here we have electron on the um, reactant side. So it means that we can cancel this out. Okay. And then okay, when you combine it, make sure the reactant must be on the reactant side. The product must be on the product side.
Okay, so that is the overall cell equation. Okay, for the case of operation of long thick cell. Okay, so next what we're going to look at is actually about the process um, of still about our long thick cell. But right now we're going to look at how the salt bridge work. So here we mentioned that it helps to separate the two electrolyte and help to maintain electrical neutrality by completing the circuit. Okay, so how does it work? Okay, so let's look here how the salt bridge work. Okay, so here we have zinc SO4 solution. Here we also have Cu uh, SO4. So Cu SO4 2 minus solution here. So as we can see, okay, anode oxidation. So zinc is oxidized, so it will lose the electron, it will form zinc 2 plus. But for the case of cathode reduction, okay, your copper 2 plus will gain the electron, okay, will, uh, and will form copper solid. Okay. So from here, how does the how does the salt bridge work? Okay. So let's look. Okay. Overall here. Okay. So at and not, what happened is actually this is the equation at and not. Okay. So what happened is that uh, zinc two plus ions enter the solution. So what happened here? Here what we have is actually not the equal amount of zinc two plus and SO four two minus. No, we will have excess of zinc 2 plus. So, what happened here? It write down that the zinc 2 plus ions enter the solution, causing an overall excess of, okay, here, 2 plus. So, it means that overall excess of positive charge. Okay, so right now, the half cell is not balanced. So, what, uh, what will happen is that, here we have our salt bridge. So the salt bridge here, I'm just going to write down it is KCl. So that's why we have here K plus Cl minus K. So what would happen? Because we have an excess of zinc 2 plus, okay, to neutralize it, uh, what will happen is the negatively charged will enter the half cell. And the negative charge in this case will be the Cl minus. Okay, so how about the explanation? So here, I'm just going to write down the negative ions from the salt bridge move into the zinc half cell to neutralize the excess positive charge. So if you have Cl, it will be Cl. If you have, for example, KNO3, it's made by the K plus NO3 minus. Kan? So you have uh, the salt bridge is KNO3 minus. The NO3 minus will enter the into the zinc half cell. Okay, so that's for the case of anode. Okay, for the case of cathode, what actually happened? So right now, Cu2 plus will leave the solution because it actually it gain electron to form Cu solid. Okay, so when you look here, okay, so what you have left, okay, it is not equal amount of copper 2 plus and SO4 2 minus. So actually what we have is excess of SO4 2 minus, which is a negative ion. Okay, so since here is an excess of negative ion, Okay, so from the salt bridge itself, okay, the positive ion will enter the salt bridge. Okay, in this case, positive ion is K+. Plus. Okay, again, here we have excess of SO4 2 minus. I'm going to write down causing an overall excess of negative charge. Hence, to neutralize it, the positive ion from the salt bridge, in this case, our K+, plus, will move into the Cu half cell to neutralize excess SO4 2 minus. Okay. So, the movement of the ion itself is actually here. By mentioning, uh, remember the function of soft bridge, maintain electrical neutrality by completing the circuit by allowing the flow of ion. As we can see itself, the uh, gaining, the losing and the gaining of the electron as well as the flow of ion. So, that's why it is important for you for the uh, governing cell to have the salt bridge itself. Okay, so that's it for.